Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Stuff Look Good. Today we'll look at a technique that goes by a few different names, but it's best known as image-based lighting or IBL. IBL is exactly what the name implies, lighting based on data stored in an image. Before we break into some code, let's have a super quick high-level overview of physically based shading. Lighting in games is typically modeled as the sum of four parts, direct diffuse light, direct specular light, indirect diffuse light, and indirect specular light. First, let's nail down the difference between diffuse and specular lighting. Diffuse reflectance models how a matte surface scatters light. For example, in earlier videos we've used N.L, or the Lambertian reflectance term, as a model for diffuse. Diffuse light can show the detail of a 3D object, but it can't really convey material definition other than matte and rough surfaces. No diffuse light will trick our eye into thinking an object is glossy. For this, we need specular reflectance, where a matte surface scatters light in all directions, a very glossy surface will mostly bounce light in a single direction. The more that reflection direction aligns with the direction to our camera, the brighter the apparent reflection is. The relationship to view direction is what makes highly specular materials appear glossy. As the camera moves about, the light appears to dance along the surface of the object, just like polished metals and plastics do in real life. Now let's look at the difference between direct and indirect lighting. Direct lighting is what we calculate given a specific light source, like a directional light or a point light. So our Lambertian reflectance from before can be more specifically classified as a model for direct diffuse. This is how we model a strong light source in a scene. A directional light representing the sun is a typical use case for direct light, but a single torch in an otherwise pitch black cave would also be a good candidate for a direct light source. Indirect lighting is a model of what happens to our direct light and other less important light sources after they hit the surface of an object. When light rays hit a matte object, they absorb only part of the light, scattering the remainder in all directions. Those rays then hit other objects which partially absorb the light before bouncing the rest. This continuous bouncing illuminates more than what was hit directly by the light source, and we call this indirect diffuse lighting. Finally, in the case of indirect specular, we are modeling how the light bouncing in the scene reacts to highly glossy objects. Depending on how glossy the material is, this light can range from a soft shimmer of objects to a perfect reflection of the surrounding environment. In an accurate simulation, when rendering a pixel, we'd know all the lighting that contributes to that pixel. But in reality, even a scene with a single key light source and just a few objects to bounce off of quickly becomes highly complex if we want to know all the light that bounced around and ended up illuminating our pixel. Enter IBL, a way of modeling the indirect lighting of a scene. We'll continue on ignoring direct light and focus on light bouncing all around the environment. Rather than calculate all the ways light bounces, what if we capture the way light looks from a single point, in all directions, and store that into a lookup texture? The lookup would only be correct for a single point, but it happens to be a good enough approximation for other nearby points. The texture we store this capture in will be a cube map. Cube maps are special textures that can be sampled using a 3D texture coordinate which corresponds to a normal direction. You can imagine this as having a cube with a different image on each of its six faces pointed inwards. If you have a point directly in the center of the cube and specify a direction, you'll hit exactly one texel of the cube map. So, if we wanted to create a cube map that captures lighting information in our scene from a specific point, it would be like having six cameras, each with a 90 degree field of view, such that they all form a cube. To keep things simple, we won't concern ourselves with capturing data from a real scene, and instead, we'll use some nice looking pre-rendered cube maps made specifically for IBL, which I'll link to in the description. Let's start with the indirect diffuse. Here we have a beginning point for our shader that takes an albedo in a normal map. Right now it calculates the perturbed world space normal using the map, but then it just returns the albedo color as is. Let's make the object diffusely lit using our cube map. We'll start by adding a texture property to the shader where we can assign a cube map. It will default to black so that when no cube map is set, the object is unlit. Now in our fragment shader, we'll sample the text cube using our perturbed normal. Then we'll multiply the albedo color by the sampled indirect diffuse color and return that. It's not a bad start, but something is off. Let's remove the maps for a second such that we just see the sampled indirect diffuse value. Of course, we just see a crisp image of the cube map. All the various details and bright spots are coming through crystal clear. That's not exactly what we'd want for our diffuse lighting. We would expect to see these lights spread over the surface in a more ambient and visually appealing way. The solution? Blurring. To simulate how all these high frequency details would affect the surface of the object at a distance, we can blur the image. 
In Unity, cube maps have some import options that will actually blur the image for us. I'll select Specular Convolution for this text cube. The other important options here are Generate Mip Maps and Try Linear Filtering. We'll toggle those, then hit Apply. Unity will prepare several versions of our cube map at decreasing resolutions and store them in the MIP levels. MIP maps are usually just lower resolution images of the same texture, but in this case, each step in the MIP chain will be progressively blurred. By the time we get to MIP level 5, we can't make out the details of the scene at all, but we do get a sense of the overall ambient lighting in the scene. Back in our shader code, we'll change the text cube function to a text cube LOD. This function allows us to sample a specific MIP level of our cube map, as the fourth value in a 4D vector. We'll wrap this into a helper function that takes the normal and a MIP level so we don't have to fuss with creating a new vector every time we want to do a MIP mapped text cube sample. Now we can sample our lighting cube map with a specific MIP level, in this case I'll use a compile time constant of 5, so my direct diffuse values will always come from the 5th MIP level of our cube map. In the editor, our sphere now looks like it is ambiently lit by a variety of sources in the environment, and if we show the skybox, we see the lighting matches nicely. Bright white lights come from the entrance to the Tokyo Big Sight Exhibition Building, and the soft pink values bouncing off the ground illuminating the underside. Putting our rocky textures back on the material, it looks quite plausibly lit by the environment. Looking at a few more materials, we see the problems that arise when you only model diffuse lighting. The three materials start to fall flat and look the same, even though in reality, hardwood, limestone, and brick all look quite distinct. This is where specular reflectance comes in. We might expect a bit of shine on the limestone, and the hardwood might even be so glossy that you could see a clear reflection in its surface. So let's go back to our shader and add support for indirect specular light. First we'll need to add another interpolator for the eye vector, which is necessary to make it appear as the light moves on the surface of the object as our camera moves. In our vertex shader, we'll calculate the eye vector as the normalized difference of the vert's world position and our camera position. Essentially, we'll have a vector that points to the vertex from our camera. Note that many workflows will use a view direction, which is a vector in the opposite direction of the IVEC. This vector is used for many direct specular calculations, but in the case of IBL, we just end up flipping it again in the fragment shader, so we'll stick to the IVEC for now. In our fragment shader, we'll need to calculate a reflection vector with which we can sample our cube map. HLSL has a reflect function to do just this, but let's take a closer look at the math behind it. Given our eye vector and a surface normal, we want to find this third vector bouncing off the surface of the object through the normal. Here's the formula for calculating our reflection. We can convince ourselves of how this works visually. Here's our normal vector and the eye vector and the reflection vector we wish to create. Move the eye vector so it's positioned at the origin. Then we show the dot product here as the eye vector projecting onto the normal vector. The dot product is a scalar value, so this part of the formula shows that we multiply it by the normal and two. And finally, we see this term is a vector subtraction from the eye vector, which brings us to this point, a voila, our reflection vector. Sampling our cube map using our new vector, r, and simply returning that, we see we get a perfect mirror. Things start to get a bit too noisy though, if we perturb our normals. In reality, few objects are perfectly reflective like this. We instead need a way to show gloss values that are imperfect mirrors. But what does imperfect mean in this regard? Picture the surface of the object at a microscopic level as one which is made up of millions of tiny mirrors. For our super glossy object, the mirrors might all be perfectly aligned with the surface, thus we always see a crisp reflection. But if the mirrors instead are slightly misaligned, the reflection at any given point will actually be a sampling of several neighboring light values mixed together. Back at a macroscopic level, we refer to how aligned the microfacet mirrors are as the gloss value. Note that some artisan workflows will favor the inverted definition of roughness, which is just one minus gloss. Recalling our diffuse lighting from earlier, we use the MIP levels of the cube map to store progressively blurred images. These blurred MIP maps will surface again, because each level functions as a less than perfect mirror, modeling how aligned the microfacets are. So rather than sample a constant MIP level like we did with diffuse, we can instead expose a parameter for how glossy the object is. I convert this value to roughness and then multiply by a constant representing the number of MIPS we want to use. In doing this we create a linear relationship between our gloss slider and which MIP level we want to sample from. Many workflows in PBR shaders will define the relationship as some sort of curve, but we'll stick to a line to keep things simple. We can combine the diffuse and specular contributions and use our gloss sliders to create some better material definition for our three examples. Before we finish up, let's also make a slider for reflectivity so that we can control how much we see of the reflection. To keep things looking somewhat plausible, we'll have the diffuse color get darker as the object becomes more reflective. 
This is a pretty naive way of modeling energy conservation, a concept that is essential to physically based rendering. Ideally, we would provide a specular color, or derive one, using metalness calculations, but we'll save that for later. So now, with just our cube map, albedo and normal maps, and our gloss and reflectivity sliders, we can create a pretty compelling range of materials. We can make materials that read as shiny and wet, or dry and matte, with a nice range of values in between. IBL provides a unique way of illuminating our scenes, and it's a common staple of more fleshed out PBR shaders, if only for the indirect specular values. If you want to improve your IBL solution, think about how you might store roughness or gloss data as a tertiary map to create surfaces that have a variable amount of roughness. You could also provide a specular input and instead of a fixed reflectivity value, derive how reflective the object is based on the intensity of the specular value at each fragment. And try bringing in a Lambertian light source back into the shader code to create a mix of indirect light from IBL and direct light values. Before you know it, you'll be halfway to a pretty compelling PBR shader. The shaders used in this video are available on GitHub and linked in the description below. I'll also point you towards Free PBR and HDR Labs SIBL archive where you can find some excellent texture sets and cube maps for experimenting with image-based lighting. Special thanks to my wonderful patrons who will always compel me to keep making these videos. You the best. And as always, thank you all for watching, keep on making those video games.